Well, Estelis, good afternoon. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. En español. Invitar a las Universidades de Santo Tomás o UST de Manila a honor este Congreso Internacional es un humilde reconocimiento del papel de la UST en la historia de la más amada y venerable universidad española, la Universidad de Salamanca. El gesto supone una lección de humildad para mí. Para mí. Por eso, el nombre de la comunidad tomasiana de la UST y muy especialmente el nombre del Padre Ángel Aparicio O.P., que me pidió que ocupase su lugar en este congreso. Les doy un millón de gracias de corazón. No pedí más que expresar mi incredulidad y mi asombro al estar representando aquí a mi Universidad de Manila. En inglés. Right after the start, a little trivia for your information. Don't you know that our Tagalog language is full of Spanish derivatives? That even the name of your prestigious university, Salamanca, has been integrated into our vocabulary so that from Salamanca, we have a noun, Salamanca, and the improper noun, Salamanquero, or Salamanquera, The first means magia, from the Spanish magia, or magic, from English magic. That's why salamanquero, salamanquera means a male or a female magician, one who is adept in tricks using hand manipulation, slay of hands in English. That is why, understandably, the meaning of salamanquero includes a witch or a sorcerer, So for us, having thus said, Universidad de Salamanca literally connotes a university of magic or a university where magic is taught. Well, if you like, in jest, where witches are born. Donde nacen las brujas. In olden times, I refer to the medieval ages. The word universitas was coined. It never connoted anything that is regarded today as academic. It simply referred to a group of persons coming together to form an association simply because these persons seem to think the same way, desired something that was common to them, and were animated by the same ideal. They were called guilds, grimios. Today we call them unions, sindicatos. So what bound them together into a single association was a certain mission with a doable vision. Later on, with the creation of the universities of antiquity, among which was this venerable institution, La Universidad de Salamanca, the academic connotation of the word universitas emerged. Now whether we talk about the university or universality, the root word is the same for both, uni, one, uno. I see this insight reflected in the theme of this Congress now in progress. That is why I have to begin with a historical narrative that is behind the words in Spanish of universidades, universities, and universalidad, universality. I so decided to begin my reflection this way. For some historical reasons, UST in Manila, which has just celebrated her quadricentennial in 2011. Please watch the following slides. head head with his most venerable University of Salamanca, now celebrating almost her 800 years of foundation. Both higher education institution 
aiming at a certain mission with a doable vision. Let me start with, despite the tremendous distance of time and space, the historical connection that existed between this university and my university in Manila. And by the way, let me be honest with you, my reflections on the year of USD are all taken from the book written by one of the most experienced and most respected church historians of the Spanish province of the Most Holy Rosary to date, Father Fidel Villaruel O.P., and his book titled, A History of the University of Santo Tomas, Four Centuries of Higher Education in the Philippines, 1611-2011, Volumes 1 and 2. Let me likewise remind you that what you hear from me is my own personal reflections on the topic given to me to expound. First part of my talk, a year, USD, El Pasado, the past. Let's pause for a moment and watch. By the end of the Middle Ages, with the Renaissance about to burst open, higher education institutions besides those of antiquity, like the universities of Paris, Oxford, Cambridge, Bologna, and Salamanca, started to assert their respective presence side by side with the different studia generalia of different religious orders, especially over here in the Iberian Peninsula. Filia Riwell gives us the following statistical figures to demonstrate this assertion. A total of 32 universities were founded by this time. Of that total, 13 may be classified as universities, 10 as university colleges, and nine as university convents. Of the nine university convents, six came from the Dominicans, like the houses of studies in the convents of Avila and Pamplona. By the time the age of colonization began in the 16th century, the presence of these universities, especially that of your university, the University of Salamanca, was transported by the zealous Spanish friar missionaries in the colonies of Spain in the Latin Americas and the West Indies, including the Philippines. It is at this point of my narrative that I quote a metaphor Father Villaruel uses to express the historical close-knittedness of USD in Manila, then called Coleo de Santo Tomas in 1611, and later the University of Santo Tomas in 1645, with your university in this way. 
like an invisible but strong silk thread in the fabric of UST's history. The intellectual aura that UST would later wear in its initial history was a copycat of that University of Salamanca via Salamanca's daughter universities, especially the Studium Generale, later of the University of Avila and that of Pamplona in Spain and those of Lima and Mexico in Latin Americas. Let me quote Villarreal here again. Salamanca's statutes, form of government, faculties, privileges, and traditions were replicated through concession from church and state authorities by other centers of learning, making it the de facto academic parent of the universities of the New World, including the University of Santo Tomas. Your university as a model eventually became the driving force behind founding universities in the Latin Americas with its distinctive evangelical purpose and drive. For example, like those of Santo Domingo, Lima, and Mexico. In this connection, Villaruel states, all these Dominican higher education institutions are reproductions, simple but faithful, of the Salamanca model. At this juncture of my talk, allow me to highlight the unforgettable features of this historical connection. I have here to narrate four such encounters between your university and UST in Manila. Primer, segundo, tercer, cuarto. Primer encuentro, the first encounter. This occurred with what Villaruel referred to as barcadas, literally, boat load of Dominican friars, most especially who came by boat or by ship. Between 1588 and 1611, the Dominican friars came in regular succession, some of whom were qualified for intellectual apostolate. But it was the Barcadas of 1606 that unloaded, besides the Colegiales, or alumni of Santo Tomas de Alcala, 13 friars from this convent of San Esteban in Salamanca, like Juan Cobo, Father Francisco Blancas de San Jose, Father Domingo Gonzalez, Father Tomas Castellar, and Father Tomas Mayor. Others still belonging to the same league would end up canonized or beatified martyrs, like Father Tomas de Zumaraga, Father Angel Orsici, Father Jose Salvanes de San Jacinto, and Father Jacinto Orfanel. Worthy of mention, still, was the first bishop of the Philippines, the Dominican Domingo Salazar and Father Baltasar Fort, who would become a signatory of the 1611 Foundation Act of the Colegio de Santo Tomas in Manila. In short, your colegiales became the pioneering Dominican educators in the Philippines. But lest we forget, for three centuries, 16th to 18th centuries, there was a steady stream of alumni coming from this prestigious university who as members of the Spanish province of the Holy Rosary later ended up provincials of said province in the Philippines, like fathers Alonso Jimenez, 1592, Francisco de Paula, 1641 and 1657, Pedro de Mejorada, 1710, Joaquin del Rosario, 1765, Juan Fernandez, 1777, and Francisco Alban, 1810. Some Salamanca alumni also became bishops in the Philippines or in the nearby Dominican mission territories in Asia, like just to mention a few of them, 
Fathers Juan Lopez, Archbishop of Cebu, Manila, Miguel Garcia, Rector of UST, and Bishop of Nueva Segovia, Miguel Calderon, Bishop of Fukien, Juan de Santa Cruz, Bishop of Vietnam, Tonkin, and Manuel Mercadillo, Rector of UST, and later Bishop of Tucumán, Argentina. Therefore, for its part, the Colegio de Santo Tomas was founded by men who were trained in Salamanca, Avila, and other Spanish institutions, and who trained in the academic governance of Salamanca, molded subsequently the University of Mexico and of Lima accordingly. Segundo Encuentro, the Second Encounter. In the 1620s, the Colegio de Santo Tomas was granted the right to confer degrees of bachelor, licentiate, and doctor in the arts and in theology by virtue of royal and ecclesial decrees from the Spanish monarch, King Philip III, and Pope Paul V, respectively. In the events that followed, in a, a juridical inquiry of the Diocese of Manila had to be convened as the Dominicans of the Colegio de Santo Tomas had requested in order to thresh out the problem of the proper implementation of said papal decree. In this regard, the services of the Colegiales of the University of Salamanca, say for example, the Augustinian friar, Father Alfonso Car Carvajal, were sought. It was deemed propitious to obtain an authentic copy of the statutes of the University of Mexico in determining conformity and compliance. Upon its reception, conversant with the statutes of Salamanca, the model of the University of Mexico, Carvajal examined these statutes. Only thereafter, a decision was then adopted by the Dominicans, that is, adherence to the people brief at pedem litere, with rigorous fidelity. This strict compliance was also observed in the manner of conducting examinations and literary exercises for one to earn a degree in arts or in theology when the first degrees were granted in 1629 conforming all with the statutes of Salamanca and Mexico. It should also be noted that by this time, 17th century, the Colegio de Santo Tomas had a pool of able professors who were skilled in the method of teaching Aristotelian philosophy, professors who were trained in Salamanca, Alcala, and other universities in Spain. The 10-year grace period of granting decrees by Pope Paul V in logic, philosophy, and theology was renewed for another 10 years by his successor, Pope Urban VIII, in 1629. The third encuentro, the third encounter. It was on November 20, 1645, by a papal decree through the apostolic brief in Super Eminenti, issued by Pope Innocent X, that USD obtained a university status, technically speaking. What began to be so trivial as a question of precedence during the funeral of Secuis in honor of Queen Isabella de Bourbon between the Jesuit Colegios and the Dominican Colegio de Santo Tomas in Manila in terms of a billing problem, whose coleo should be acknowledged first in public, ended up a court case over degree-granting issues. The Dominicans questioned the rights of a local Jesuit colegio, the Colegio de Manila, to confer degrees in the arts when it had been stipulated very clearly in the papal brief in Super Eminenti that the exclusive right to confer academic degrees within a radius of 3,000 leagues belonged to USD. And the Jesuit Colegio de Manila fell within said radius, which should be acknowledged 
as a royal and pontifical institution, the Jesuit went on the offensive, stating thereafter that the Pope, through this papal brief, did not really elevate the Collet de Santo Tomas into a University of General Studies, Universitas Studiorum Generalium, such as those of Lima and Mexico. The conclusion was that the Pope had merely granted to Collegio de Santo Tomas the privilege in conferring degrees in the arts and theology, but without making it a university in the technical sense of a university of general studies. So, on this strong note, the Jesuits flatly denied that UST was a university in the proper sense of the term because it did not qualify as a university of general studies. And add to this, the brief referred to UST always as academia, not university or university of general studies. The Dominican encounter, uh, counter responded by having recourse once more to UST's mother university, Salamanca and Mexico. First, in Latin texts like these papal brief, a university is often called academia, just like addressing those of Paris and Salamanca as Academia Parincensiensis and Academia Salamanticensis, respectively. Second, the Dominicans also sought the support of another institution, the University of Mexico. From the moment of its inauguration, as a university onwards, UST communicated constantly with this University of Mexico in matters of academics. As a matter of historical fact, the first statutes of UST drafted in the year of its opening in 1611 were copied verbatim from those of Mexico, and some decades hence, the affinity between Mexico and Manila was further strengthened by bilateral ties. And by the way, I have to mention a Dominican Venezuelan friar who created a name while assigned in the Philippines. His name is Father Juan de Arechedera, a doctoral degree holder in theology from the University of Mexico, later became twice rector of UST, 1735, 1737, 1743, 1745, and Bishop of Nueva Segovia, 1750, 1751. In Philippine history, he is best remembered as being the governor general from 1745 to 1750, who baptized Alimuddin I, the only Catholic sultan of the Muslim island of Sulu. Cuarto Encuentro, the Fourth Encounter. The Fourth Encounter, we situate in the most turbulent period in the long history of UST, as it was facing the prospect of extinction after a three-century rule under the Spanish flag, now with the Philippine-Spanish Revolution of 1896, brewing over the horizon, and two years later, the unexpected arrival of the new conquistadores, the North Americans, in 1898. USD was caught right at the eye of the super twister, this turbulent transition from Spanish rule to the Filipino-Spanish Revolution until the coming of the Americans in 1898. Un poco de frasfondo histórico, a little historical background. Medieval scholasticism lost its popularity when the medieval period ended. However, there was a strong revival during the Tridentine period particularly in several schools and universities in Spain, most particularly in the University of Salamanca. By the later part of the 18th century, 
This revival was eclipsed by the rise of the Age of Enlightenment, marked by the rationalistic philosophy and by the progress of science. Eventually, these philosophical trends in Europe would have some repercussions on the Dominican institution in Manila. It necessitated the need in USD to reactivate philosophy that had suffered a lackluster status for some years now when some philosophy subjects were transferred and integrated into the curriculum of the fifth year of secondary education. Thus, although no official suppression was issued, philosophy practically continued to exist only to grant licentiate and doctoral degrees to Dominican professors. Second, USD had to take a second look at the status of its science courses in the university due to scientific advancements in the Age of Enlightenment. What added fuel to this rather stressful and volatile situation was this. The impact of these emerging trends in mainland Europe felt strongly on the propaganda movement in the Philippines that lasted approximately from 1868 to 1898 with the most activity between 1880 and 1895. The most famous among these student organizations was the movement founded in 1882 here in Spain, in Madrid, by young Filipino students. The least of these Filipino propagandists betrayed that most of them were foremost USD graduates and or students. High on their agenda for reform that had earned a tirade of blistering comments and complaints was the secularization of their alma mater, University of Santo Tomas. To succeed in this cause, one prerequisite that had to be obtained first was the abandonment of the Dominican clout over the university and the whole Philippine educational system for that matter. By and large, these Filipino propagandists painted a very unpleasant picture of USD, a step backward in time similar to that of the Peninsular Universities way back in 1833, this backwardness out of step with the current trends was one of the reasons affluent students of Manila decided to study abroad. This advocacy for drastic changes in the academic governance of UST was further ignited by the 1871 decree of the ultra liberalist Spanish overseas minister, Segismundo Moret, ordering the secularization of the university, and his move, in fact, was born of the, out of the anti-clerical spirit that dominated the political and cultural circles of Madrid at that time. In the name of updating UST with these emerging signs of the times, Six new and fresh recruits of Dominican friars, well-trained in the sciences and the letters, came over the Philippine shore, so that USD opened in early 1896 the Faculty of Science and the Faculty of Philosophy and Letters, its last two faculties established in the Spanish regime, albeit lasting only for two years due to the outbreak of the Filipino-Spanish Revolution in 1896. Prior to their Manila assignment, these six professed Dominican brothers from the convents of Ocaña and Avila had to take up first complementary civil studies for licentiate in any of the universities of Salamanca, Barcelona, Sevilla, and Madrid. These highlighted four encounters that ensued between the University of Salamanca and the University of Santo Tomas in Manila in the past could not have been richer and memorable had it not for some administrative problems. In summary, 
as was already indicated, USD's rich history began when in 1619, Pope Paul V granted the right to confer degrees for 10 years to the Faculties of Arts and Theology of USD, which was founded on April 28, 1611. In 1629, this 10-year contract was renewed by his successor, Pope Urban VIII. On November 20, 1645, Pope Innocent X raised the Colleo to the status of a university with civil and ecclesiastical faculties. Add to these historical facts are the following awards. In 1785, King Charles III of Spain granted UST the prestigious title Royal. In 1982, 1902, Pope Leo III awarded the title Pontifical to UST, while in 1947, Pope Pius XII lavished UST with the title The Catholic University of the Philippines. In the 20th century onwards, the university operated under Philippine laws, especially since 1945, under the supervision of the government agency called Commission on Higher Education, or simply CHED. That was the year, the past, the first part of my paper. Now I move to the second part, the OI, the present. USD OI, El Presente, the present. Please watch the slides. Today, the Mother University, La Universidad de Salamanca, and the Daughter University, La Universidad de Santo Tomas in Manila, are both busy answering and conforming to global trends. Due to the effects of globalization that shrunk the world into a tiny global village, accelerated by information computer technology, your university and mine are setting their respective goals and objectives towards being globally competitive and relevant because of the eventual creation of a global knowledge economy and the realities of cross-border academic mobility. Way back in 1999, in preparation for the USD quadricentennial celebrations in 2011, USD identified 12 strategic key result areas 
or simply crass. With the election of the new rector in 2012, in the person of very reverend Father Herminia Vida Gohoy OP, his office was tasked, based on these key result areas, to chart with a forward-thinking attitude various challenges and changes that will come our way in the next couple of years. The crusts were subsequently improved. Thus, on September 11, 2013, and November 6, 8, 2013, USD's administrators reviewed these 12 crusts and decided to reduce them into nine and call them the nine directional areas from which law objectives have been formulated to meet and address future challenges, as well as to determine where we are heading, giving us the opportunity to cover new grounds and conquer new territories. These are the nine directional areas. Number one, Tomasian identity. The core and animator of the remaining directional areas anchored on the Tomasian three C's, competence, compassion, and commitment. The second, leadership and governance, aims at recognition as a premier learning institution in Asia by becoming more proactive, systematic, mission-oriented university. Third, excellent teaching and advanced learning aims at empowerment of our students and alumni with necessary and relevant knowledge, skills, and competencies. Fourth, internationalization aims at globalization of academic experience and acquisition of skills, competencies, oriented training needed for global employability. Fifth, research and innovations aims at the internationalization of research outputs in view of global recognition of these in various disciplines due to the logic of global knowledge economy. Sixth, community development and advocacy aims at involvement in social issues for social transformation through advocacies and ministries. Seventh, our student welfare and services aims at efficient and effective response to the welfare and needs of students by setting high standards in all student activities and programs. Eighth, public presence aims at exercising influence in the community, both local and abroad, in varied and timely issues and influencing national and international policies. And ninth, resource management aims at professionalizing the workforce by procuring and maintaining a conducive learning and working environment with the state-of-the-art facilities and resources. Due to time limitation and in view of the overall theme of this Congress, allow me to dwell only on three directional areas, namely leadership and governance. Second, internationalization. And third, research and innovation in this order. First, leadership and governance. Besides the creation of relevant units or offices so as to keep abreast with the demands of the changing times, this directional area is concerned, among others, with monitoring and improving the international ranking of UST. During the General Management Assembly meeting held on February 16, 1215, Father Rector de Goho is stressed that standards are markers of quality that provide a correct and concrete picture of an organization's performance, stability, and sustainability. The need to implement quality standards has been a major trust by universities worldwide 
for the last 20 years to achieve an unvarying concept of excellence to accomplish its, its mission. He added, the best way we can serve the country as an institution is to prepare a generation of Filipinos by affording the quality education that is not only the best in the country, but something of global quality. Of late, in 2015, USD was awarded the first in the Philippines, an overall rating of four stars by the Quarali Simons GS Stars team from London. It's armed the QS Intelligence Unit, or QSIU, having gathered important data from the USD portfolio, evaluated them against the preset standards in eight main categories, employability, research, internationalization, teaching, facilities, inclusiveness, formerly access, social responsibilities, formerly engagement, and the institution standing in specialist subject. Five stars were accorded USD in the categories of employability, facilities, social responsibility, and inclusiveness, with two stars for research and three stars for internationalization. Last year of November, QS released its international ranking for graduate employability for the year 2016. USD received a core of 34.4, meriting it to be included in the 150 to 200 rank. On this score of employability, among Philippine universities alone, USD is ranked first. In terms of QS World University ranking, USD occupies a spot of 701st maintaining the same for the past three consecutive years, which sadly was a demotion of the 601st spot in 2012. But among Asian universities, USD improved its ranking by notching the 141st spot from last year's 150th based on the 2014 QS University rankings in Asia. USD retained its number three spot among the leading, a Philippine institution that make it to the annual ranking of QS. When degree programs are graded this way, internationally by accrediting agencies, we can be sure that USD's degree programs are rendered compliant with international standards. The second, internationalization. Internationalization is one directional area whose purpose is to intensify and improve the image building and projection of USD abroad. This directional area that falls under the Office of International Relations and Programs OIRP demands establishing academic linkages with our foreign counterparts, such as with international institutions. Such collabor collaborative partnership may be in terms of research productivity, international presence, exchange programs, and other similar activities, such as the inbound foreign students on mobility program for short study and outbound USD students for varied faculty collaborations. The following information was recently released by the OIRP. 20 new bilateral agreements were forged during the year. To date, the total number of foreign linkages is 120. In the field of research, seven new research collaborations were forged in the following areas. Rehabilitation science, biology, 
and chemistry. Four of these receive grants from international funding agencies, such as USAID, U.S. National Science Foundation, UNESCO, Mekoteco Taiwan, and International Foundation for Science. In terms of student mobility, the university saw a 318% increase in the number in the UST outbound students across the disciplines or study abroad in sandwich programs, internships, history, language, and civilization courses for three academic years. Out of the 230 outbound students, 53 went to Asian universities, 25% to the USA, 15% to Europe, and 8% to Australia. There was also a 174% increase in the number of inbound students who took part in the language and culture courses, internships, community immersions, and service learning. UST is also hosts to 506 diverse international degree students coming from 30 different countries. The presence of UST abroad is carried through membership in international organizations such as International Councils of Universities in St. Thomas Aquinas, ICUSTA, International Federation of Catholic Universities, IFCU, Association of Southeast and East Asian Colleges and Universities, ASHIACU, Asian International Mobility for Students, AIMS, and University Mobility in Asia and Pacific, UMAP, and others. Internationalization awareness, understanding, and appreciation will now be integrated into the institution's mainstream activities, its strategic plans and initiatives, as well as into appropriate curriculum designing. In line with international integration and synchronization, especially with the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, ASEAN vision in place now, USD had shifted the opening of its academic calendar from June to August, starting academic year 2014-2015. Lastly, starting academic year 2016-2017, USD, just as the rest of higher education institutions in the Philippines, will start the K-12 program that is adding two more years in the high school level, now called senior high. And the third, research and innovations. Research is the lifeblood that links instruction, knowledge generation and utilization, and community engagements in a compact interactive networking. At this juncture of my lecture, I shall now talk about the USD graduate school's contribution to this directional area. I have been with the USD graduate school right after earning my doctoral degree in dogma from Angelicum Rome in 1994. Henceforth, I have been assigned as its regent and once I was its dean from 1995 to 2000. It was when I was the dean that I got involved with the Philippine Association for Graduate Education, or PAGE, founded in 1962. I am now the current president of PAGE, this being my third term to be elected president. One of the baby faculties, colleges in the university, the ESD Graduate School was born in June 1938 to shelter under one roof and to coordinate subsequently all graduate and postgraduate studies in the faculties and colleges, except that of medicine and surgery and the ecclesiastical faculties of philosophy, 
canon law and theology. From then onwards, the graduate course programs have expanded to date to 60 masters and 20 doctoral degree programs. Among the master's programs, four of its four academic degree programs were granted level four accreditation by PACOCOA, the Philippine Association of Colleges and Universities Commission on Accreditation. I am referring to the Master of Arts program, which has 11 disciplines, Master of Science, which has five disciplines, MA in Education, and MA in Pharmacy. Three remaining master's programs are scheduled for level four accreditation as well. And for the first time in the history of graduate education in the Philippines, the UST Graduate School is busy now preparing the necessary documents for some of its doctoral course programs to be accredited level one. All in all, UST institutional recognition from PACOCOA covers the following accomplishments, among others. Highest number of accredited programs in the Philippines. Highest number of accredited programs in Metro Manila. Highest number of level four accredited programs in the Philippines. Contributions of USD Graduate School. The USD Graduate School, being a research-oriented academic unit, assumes leadership in addressing issues through a vibrant research agenda through its Office for Graduate Research, or OGR. The OGR, although a subunit of the Graduate School, assists in the attainment of the research goals of the University of Santo Tomas Office for Research and Innovation, or UST, ORI, which functions directly under the Office of Director of University. It has a Vice Rector as its head. The OAR is charged with running the following four main research centers or flagships, namely, Research Center of Culture, Education, and Social Issues, Research Center for Health Sciences, Research Center for Natural Sciences, Research Center for Religious Studies and Ethics. According to the OAR, OIR, the following information is an update bulletin of the research productivity of UST. A total of 186 funded research projects were conducted for this academic year. Of the 186 research projects, 63 are externally funded, amounting to a total grant of 1086 million pesos. About 81% of the total fund were derived from national government agencies. 45.2% of faculty members engaged in externally funded research projects are PhD holders, establishing their ex expertise in their respective disciplines. Of the 61 PhDs, 75% are foreign trained. CHED has accredited the following journals of the University of Santo Tomas the Filipiniana Sacra, Acta Manilana, and Critique, as CHED Category A2 journals, recognizing their reputations in international caliber status. The graduate school's roster of academics is composed of high quali qualified faculty who serve as research supervisors, advisors, and members of the examination tribunal Many of them are also affiliated with a different USD research center. Under their direct mentorship, graduate school students have been able to produce quality research outputs, evidenced by their being accepted 
for presentation in professional scientific meetings locally, regionally, internationally. Another proof is the student's publication in national and international referee journal. In academic year 2013-2014, the students' publications of the graduate school reached a total of 74. In 2014-2015, the OGR targeted 150 published articles. It exceeded the target since 151 articles were published, 27 of which were indexed in Thomson Reuters ISI and or Scopus. Therefore, the USD Graduate School has contributed tremendously to the improvement of research productivity of USD. As released by the Office for Research and Innovations, of the 232 publications in academic year 2014-2015, 209 are published in international journals with 111 indexed in Scopus. In academic year 2012-2013, 86 USD publications were indexed in Scopus. In academic year 2013-2014, the total number of publication indexed in Scopus is 109. And for the academic year 2014-2015, the total is 111. As far as research production of the USD Graduate School is concerned, the following statistics are obtained. A total of 796 student researchers were produced in the last five academic years, 142 published papers of the graduate students and 688 published papers of faculty in the last five academic years, 1,203 presentations of graduate students in the last five academic years. A rough estimation of the USD graduate school contribution to the overall research productivity of UST is 25% to 30% coming from the graduate students and about 50% coming from the students and faculty combined. According to OIR, a total of 362 paper presentations were made and out of 362 paper presentations, 55% of the research papers were presented in national conference and 45% in international conferences. For sure, the USD Graduate School has contributed to this endeavor. The table below shows this. This business of author citation index makes us realize that in the global arena, we face the ever-growing demand for universities to structure learning around specialized disciplines, across disciplines, and make research relevant to society. Part of the global internationalization of universities is through the use of faculty metrics thus ensuring the global extent of influence and visibility of written scholarly articles. As mentioned earlier, Scopus has done it for UST. Like the rest of citation agencies, Scopus has publication metrics through its Author Citation Index and Hirsch Index. According to OIR, there are 135 faculty members engaged in both internally and externally funded research projects. I am happy to note that a number of our graduate school faculty have their scholarly articles 
in different referee journals cited by their peers. It is not only their names that get to be circulated globally, but the name of UST as well. 31 UST graduate school faculty have publication metrics. See www.scopus.com. Looking back at our past with sense of nostalgia and looking around us at present with a sense of gratitude, the UST Tomasian community is proud to state that UST has produced national heroes, church martyrs, canonized and beatified, renowned scientists, national artists, internationally renowned business people and athletes, prominent doctors, four presidents of the Philippines, three vice presidents, and six chief justices of the Philippines. El Futuro, the future. Now looking forward this time, perhaps in the name of globalization in general and internationalization in particular, or much closer to the theme of this international congress, in the name of universality, the University of Salamanca and the University of Santo Tomas can now explore the possibility of linkages in terms of professors, students, and even library resources, thus reviving the historical ties that once bound mother university and daughter university together, and so address the lingerer longing to be connected once more as we had in the initial birth pangs of the University of Santo Tomas. Together, we can be stronger in exploring and advocating the truth for whose sake your University of Salamanca and our University of Santo Tomas were foremost established. Conclusion. UST still remains to be the biggest Catholic university in the world in one campus, having an estimated student population averaging per semester or term more or less 43,000 to 45,000 students, enlightened, guided, and facilitated in their learning courses by a pool of committed faculty members numbering almost 2,000. En español. Al igual que nuestra Universidad Madre, la Universidad de Salamanca, hay algo oportuno, timely, en la UST, porque se vuelto intemporal, timeless, siempre antigua y siempre nueva. Citando a San Agustín de Hipona, por eso ambas universidades han podido sobrevivir a las vicisitudes del tiempo y el espacio con una misión clara dentro de una visión que había que llevar a cabo es decir ser universales en el pasado ayer como en el presente hoy esto no podría haberlo hecho vuestra universidad ni la mía, si no fuera por su capacidad para leer los signos de los tiempos por venir y de adaptarse a las nuevas situaciones sin perder nuestra propia 
identidad. 